Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin there uh, adding that Putin's military buildup is not just for show, perhaps supporting the reports that a Russia invasion is imminent. In fact, a new poll this week revealing the majority of Americans feel that the tensions will lead to war. Joining us now to discuss, Pennsylvania Congressman Guy Reschenthaler, who's also an Iraq Naval War veteran. Uh, thanks so much for coming on today. We appreciate you taking the time. Thanks, Emma. Always enjoy it. You got it. All right. So some breaking news this morning here uh, that we've been following. We are just trying to keep the latest as to what's going on. The Kremlin launching ballistic missiles, uh, drills, apparently, that will be overseen by Putin himself, going to test the reliability of strategic nuclear capability. Now, this sounds kind of frightening uh, to your average listener here. What do you make of this? There's a lot of things going on. It's just Putin keeping at the front of the tension with Ukraine, because as long as Putin is front and center, he's more legitimate geopolitically. Uh, he has more power on the international stage. And Joe Biden and our allies in the West look weaker and weaker. So it's in Putin's best interest to keep that tension going because he aggrandizes himself in, in, in Moscow and the Russian Federation. And again, he puts the West on the defensive. Sure. You say that right now he holds the power, which is something we've kind of seen from the White House. They're waiting uh, for him to act before they even possibly respond. But we've also kind of heard reports of a timeline being set in place. Again, initially it was February 16th. That date has come and gone. Uh, maybe four to five days after the fact we could see an invasion. What, what do you make of sort of putting a, a timeline or a date on when we could possibly see an invasion? How does that impact what's actually going to play out, if at all? Yes. Well, the reason I'm talking about us being on the defensive here is mm -hmm. that Joe Biden is trying to leave from behind, Emma. What we should be doing is taking a very proactive stance toward Ukraine. For example, uh, ranking member Mike McCall, my good friend on foreign affairs, uh, I joined one of his bills called the Guard Act, and that would place immediate sanctions on Russia. Uh, we have another bill that would sanction Putin personally, his family, uh, the oligarchs that are supporting him. We need to take immediate actions now, uh, diplomatically, to put Putin on the defensive. Right now, when Joe Biden leads from behind, Putin is in control. If we were to shut down, uh, if we were to shut down the um, Nord Stream two, the pipeline going from Russia to Germany immediately, yeah. if we were to urge our NATO allies to bring Ukraine into NATO now, it would put Putin on his heels, and we would be exerting influence. Right now, because we're acquiescing to Russian aggression, because we're not taking a leadership role in the world, again, thank you, Joe Biden, and those around him. We are now playing to, to, to Putin. He's in control. He's dictating the terms. We should be taking a very proactive uh, stance, defending democracies and making sure that the world knows that America and our allies will not be bullied around. Because, Emma, at the end of the day, this is really about aggression elsewhere. The CCP is looking at how we're reacting because they're looking to invade Taiwan, the free and independent nation of Taiwan. Iran could get more aggressive. Uh, North Korea could get more aggressive. The world is watching how Joe Biden and the West have shown fecklessness in the face of Russian aggression. That's the real danger here. You know, we've seen U.S. troops being deployed to the area, uh, not to Ukraine. And we've heard from President Biden that they will not be fighting in Ukraine if an invasion were to occur. Uh, how are Americans in your district viewing that? Again, the deployment of U.S. troops to the region, uh, when, of course, we we've seen what happened at our own border, uh, where it's been very unprotected at this time. So there is an argument. Well, why are we sending troops to Ukraine to protect borders in Eastern Europe, but not protecting our own border? And I would submit to anybody making that argument that that is a false choice. False choice. We're the United States of America. We can do anything we so choose. We have that ability. We're the world superpower. We're the largest GDP. We should be protecting our own border. Of course, we should end the chaos on the southern border. We should shut down the fentanyl that's leading across the border, coming into my district, literally killing people. We should also be engaged internationally to make sure that we're protecting our allies. Remember, we've got a treaty obligation with Ukraine. Ukraine gave up their nuclear weapon with a Budapest agreement, and it was the United States and Great Britain that promised Ukraine that if they gave up those nuclear weapons, we would support them in the face of Russian aggression. Right. Where was, where was Great Britain when, when the CCP rolled into Hong Kong? Nowhere. Where was the United States? When, uh, when the Taliban was resurging in Afghanistan, nowhere. It's that weakness that's mm. now pushing Putin 
to move into Ukraine. And that's why it's time for the West, the United States, Great Britain, for example, to finally live up to some of these treaty obligations. And if we don't do this, we could see the start of a new arms race. We could see these second rate nations all over the globe getting nuclear weapons and refusing to surrender the nuclear yeah. weapons because they'll know when we make promises, we don't stand behind them. Sure. I am sick and tired of America showing weakness. We should be proactive and we should live up to our obligations internationally. And we should certainly defend democratic states against authoritarian tyrants. Yeah, no doubt uh, concerning what you lay out here, the possibilities we could be facing, not to mention those high energy prices here at home. Also concerns about that uh, if an invasion were to occur. Congressman Guy Reschenthaler joining us this morning. Congressman, thanks so much. We appreciate it.